hello welcome if this is your first time on my channel hi i hope um you get to stay and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always coming back to watch i truly appreciate so in today's video i'm going to be giving us a beginner's guide on how to apply to a university in malta as an international student everything i'll be saying in this video is going to be of my own experience and you know information that i've been able to read up here and there i'm just going to be sharing everything i know i believe it's going to help one or two people that are in the process or have decided that they want to study in malta if this is a video you're interested in please keep watching so first you've decided that malta is a country where you want to come into to study either for your diploma for your bsc or your masters and then the next step you have to take is to search for the perfect university for you now searching for the perfect university for you is dependent on a lot of things you have to consider if this university is actually offering the course you're interested in another thing is their tuition fees is within what you can afford another thing to also consider is what their education structure is like in the school do they do well with their students? Are there international students there you can actually reach out to, to ask a few questions? Are there international students there that you can actually relate to? And also, are there reviews online that you can go through, you know, read and just try to get to know about the school, even without being in Malta? Is there available information online where you can actually go through? read and you can easily learn a few things about this school of course that is a step i feel is important that um, every applicant has to take at least i took that step so to do this is very easy you can start by just searching on google cheap and affordable schools or universities in malta you can also search for popular and affordable universities in malta or let's say you want to study a course in medicine um, like maybe not nursing, you can search for universities in Malta that offer nursing or universities in Malta that offer pharmacy or whatever course it is you want to do. If it's something you want to do a course in business, of course you should search up affordable schools or popular schools in Malta that offer courses in business. You know, just searches like that on Google and trust me, you're going to get a whole lot of results from that and just check them out one by one go through the website if you're if there is a review you can you know go through the reviews there you can search on youtube to see if there are actually international students that are on youtube that talk about these schools you know some of the schools just try you can search on other platforms not just on youtube i believe for each school you will definitely see information you just have to take your time to search i mean if you're in the searching phase you don't want to make a mistake you want to take your time to search so that you don't end up um, going for a school that is not accredited or you just don't make the wrong choice i mean you want to maximize this searching period and make sure that you're searching for the right thing so that's it in the description box i'm going to list out few schools um you can start with those schools you know for your search and also move on to other schools i'm going to list out about five or six these five or six schools are not the only schools in malta but then these are schools that i either know where they are located at or i have a friend or two that actually attend these schools. I mean, the most popular ones are the University of Malta, MCAS, Global Banking School, that's GBS Malta, where I school, and STC. For STC, I know where they are located, but I do not know anyone schooling there. Um, we have Global College. I know people that school in Global College. And then we also have the Queen Mary School of Nursing. Or I'm going to put the name on the screen. I know the location of the school. I do not know anyone studying there. If there are other schools that I come across, I'm going to also list them out in the description box. Like I said, there are other schools in Malta, but it's either I do not know about them, I do not know about the location, 
or I do not know anyone studying there. So I'm just going to put out what I know and I'm sure of, okay? So after your research, let's say you have two or three schools. Of course, I will always advise that we have at least three schools. You know, try to reach out to three schools and actually apply. As long as they tick your criteria, I believe as an applicant, there should be certain criteria that a school should meet for you to actually decide to go on with them. So have at least three so that you so that you have options try to reach out to the school go through their website i believe that every school website have an inquiry form where you can actually go and you know fill in your details and ask them a few questions and definitely someone is going to reach out to you let's say you're interested in um, studying one of the courses they offer let's say in business and management you can fill in the inquiry um, form for that course. Ask them everything. Just don't be scared to ask questions. Ask away. You can ask about the document they will need for your application um, process. What um, documents are needed for you as an applicant to provide to be able to gain this admission. You can ask for their visa process because, of course, the visa process is really important. You need to know. And their tuition fee their tuition fee is definitely going to be on the website if there is any information at all you do not fully understand please go on to ask the school someone will definitely reach out to you from the school and ask away ask any question you do not understand at all so after this inquiry stage if you're satisfied with all the information you've gotten go ahead to send your document the document that is required of the school for the course you are applying for and you get the admission is that easy for me i was going for a master's program i just had to provide my bsc certificate my transcript a motivation letter and an english proficiency certificate now for this for my school my school accepts the duolingo and i already had that before i even started applying so i submitted that I believe some schools, if you present, if you apply from Nigeria, if you present your WAIEC, of course you should um, pass um, English language in your WAIEC exam, and you also present a letter stating that you studied in English for your bachelor's program. Let's say if you're going for your master's, I believe that should be okay. So this should be part of the questions you should ask the school. If they mention that they need a sort of English proficiency certificate from you, then ask them. If you do not have the IELTS or the Duolingo, just ask them what the you know accept and ask them if your work result is okay and if a letter from your school stating that you studied in English is okay. If they say yes, then you know you go ahead. But if they say no, they are not okay with it and you feel you can't meet up with what they want, then you can move on to another school. Is that easy? That's why it is really important to make your research and make sure you ask as much questions as you can so that you're sure you're, you're prepared and you have all the documents you need to apply. After you've submitted your whole document and you've gotten the admission, of course, the next thing is to make your payment either full payment or half payment. Some schools would require that you pay everything at once. Some would require that you pay instrumentally. This should be, of course, part of the questions that you ask. And after the payment, you're issued your visa support letter from the school. Some schools might actually require um, you do some sort of interview before you're even given the admission. Um, not all schools do that. If your school doesn't require that, fine. If they do, it's still okay. I feel it's just questions you should be able to answer. It's not such a big deal. The next thing is to start your visa application process. So for your visa application process, of course, there are a lot of things involved. There are documents you should be able to provide. Always ask questions. By now, you should have an admission officer that is assigned to you. Please do not feel shy. If you are confused on anything at all, always ask questions. For me, during my application last year, my application was in um, 2023. So for 2024, there's definitely um, new documents that are being required. I'm just going to be mentioning in those documents that I was asked to provide during my own application. So I was asked to 
um, get my passport, my visa application form, my GDPR form, my health insurance, my flight reservation, and proof of accommodation, a picture of my bank card, my bank statements, and I think that's it. For the travel insurance, I was a bit confused at first because during my research for visa application documents for a Schengen visa, I read up that the travel insurance should be worth at least 30,000 euros. <laughs> you know, I got scared. I thought that I'll have to pay as high as 30,000 euros for a travel insurance, but you know, with further research and questions, you know, asking my school, they, I was clarified on that. It doesn't mean that I have to purchase a travel insurance of 30,000 euros. It just means that whatever travel insurance I get, it has to worth up to 30,000 euros. And of course, it must cover repatriation, travel and health in case of any emergencies come up. And I only had to show travel insurance for three months. I hear it's up to one year now, but during my own time, it was just for three months. And I used Azamansa, their Schengen visa option. That was what I used for three months. And I didn't pay up to 25,000 Naira. It was less than 25,000 Naira. So now I don't know if you can still use Azamansa for one year. I really do not know. I can't because I know I'm going to get questions like that. I do not know because when I did mine, it was just for three months. I do not know if you can use it for one year. And of course, even if you can, it's going to cost more than 25,000 Naira. And like I said, I use the Schengen visa option. And I also like to tell us that this Azamansad insurance I use was just to cover my travel. Because when I arrived in Malta, I had to get a proper insurance here in Malta that will help me apply for my residence permit. So the insurance I got from Azamansad, like I said, it was for three months and it wasn't up to a one-year insurance which I needed to use in my application for a residence permit. So bear that in mind. If your school offers an insurance um, policy to you as a student to buy, which is actually going to cover for your travel and also going to and is also going to help you apply for your residence permit here in Malta then go for it if it's something you can afford if not do your research and you definitely see options that are very okay for you now for the visa application form if you have any problems filling the visa application form i already have a video on this channel you know putting us through on how to fill that for the gdpr form is very easy i'll do a video later on to show us how to fill that in but this is something you can actually ask your um, admission officer to also put you through if you're confused but it's very easy there is nothing confusing about it for your flight reservation i also have a video on this channel putting us through on the flight reservation the flight reservation this is not a real um, flight tickets it's just a reservation if you want to understand more please watch the video on my channel about the flight reservation another document you would need is um, your proof of accommodation now for the proof of accommodation some schools might have a hostel or some school might have an accommodation that they already offer you can go ahead you know and accept that some schools might actually also make it compulsory that every student must accept the accommodation policy you can also go ahead with that but regardless if you do not have a friend because in my case i had a friend that helped me with my own accommodation so it wasn't much of a problem for me but if you do not have that you can actually um book a reservation a hotel reservation i also have a video on this channel on how to do that please watch that video to understand you know more on on this topic once you have your reservation it's just a reservation that is going to you present during your um visa application stage after you've gotten your visa you can go ahead and book a real hotel um reservation where you actually stay when you arrive and then in the two weeks that you've booked the hotel you can actually start searching for a proper accommodation where you of course get your one-year contract because that is very important and is going to help you in your application for your residence permit is very very important 
another document you definitely need is a proof of funds i already did a video here on this channel explaining the proof of fund in details please watch that video but um during my own time i only had to show a proof of fund of about seven thousand euros because i already had a proof that oh i have an accommodation where i can stay as long as i wanted to but um for now i think you have you do not have that you have to show up to 12,000 euros in your account. During my own time, it was for three months, but now I hear it's for six months. So you definitely need to show your proof of fund have to be for a duration of six months. And then the total in that account has to show that, yes, you have up to 12,000 euros. That's just it. It doesn't matter if um for the first or second and third month that you didn't have up to that twelve thousand. at the end of the six months on that account statement your total just have to be up to that twelve thousand euros so another document i had to um provide was um, my bank card the bank card to the account i was using as my proof of fund or to show my proof of fund i had just had to show get a picture of the front and the back of the card of course, I blurred out the number on the card. I don't know if they asked for that now, but I had to submit that. And I think that was it. So once you have all these documents available, go ahead and do your application. Um, when I did my application, it was via the premium visa application, but now it is via VFS. And for the premium visa, I had to pay a total of 270 euros both for my career charge and the visa application charge that was just it but now is is through a different method via vfs i think the total amount of money you pay via vfs application is almost i think is up to 270 euros or a little bit up to 300 i really do not know i'm not sure please feel free to always reach out to your admission officer if you do not understand what is required of you when it comes to applying via vfs please reach out to your admission officer but regardless i feel you're going to be put through on every step especially on your visa application so it's something you're not going to be doing alone if you're ever confused always ask questions so after you've successfully applied the next thing is to prepare for your interview questions i'm not sure everybody gets to you know have an interview but for me i had an interview i have a well detailed video on this channel um in that video i told us about all the questions i was asked how you should answer your questions and just watch the video and i promise it's going to really help you for your own interview preparation so after your interview you just have to wait trust me you have to be patient and you know pray and just believe that everything will come out well I believe if all your documents and everything was your application was well done you will definitely get the visa you just have to wait patiently and in your waiting period don't just wait like that you can also research on more things about Malta jobs in Malta how to get you know a job in Malta accommodations in Malta you can also research on documents you need to provide to be able to get your residence permit. you know just try to get more information those information you know that is going to be important to you once you arrive in malta you can use your waiting period to do this instead of just being anxious and everything just try to make this waiting period productive for you so after you've gotten your visa the next thing is for you to of course um, book your flights and if you do not have an accommodation planned out already you make sure you book that and then you arrive Malta. Once you arrive Malta or before you even arrive Malta, I would also advise that you get your bus card. Try to register. Of course, you've gotten your visa at this point. I believe your school will tell you about this, but if they do not, please request for it. I already have a video on this channel on that topic, but regardless, tell your school you want to register for the bus card and then you use your school address as you know the drop off location so that someone from your school can actually help pick up the card for you so just tell your school about it they'll give you the website 
and you go ahead to register you do not need a mortar number to get that done you can use your nigerian number your email is straightforward just tell your school to put you through or you can watch my video on this channel and you get that settled so that as soon as you enter Malta, you have your card ready and you start to enjoy the free transportation. You don't have to um, pay for the transportation here. So as soon as you arrive Malta and maybe you're staying in, in a hotel, of course, you definitely have to start searching for your accommodation. Whatever accommodation you get is compulsory to get the one year contract. Very important. You can search for accommodations on um, Facebook groups. Just search for Facebook groups on Malta regarding accommodations in Malta. You're going to see a lot. Just search and once you're in Malta, try to reach out to an agent and make sure you go in person to view these houses so that you're sure you're actually going through the right source to avoid being scammed. If you've not arrived Malta yet, you can also search on these groups, but do not make any sort of payment. You can just get the agent's phone number and just have it so that when you arrive then you can go ahead to see these houses in person and then make your payment and also you can search on facebook marketplace once you arrive Malta, you can you know search for accommodations also on facebook marketplace and you're going to see a lot of options just remember that you must they must provide the one year contract it's very important for you because that's what will help you to register for your residence permit once you are able to get all this sorted out to get your residence permit you start your applications for a job of course you need to make your cv in the europass um, format i'll leave a link in the description box you just click on it and it's going to put you through and guide you through on how you can create a cv just like that after that you're able to get a job and you just try to settle in in malta try to face your studies and enjoy your experience here in malta as an international student i hope i've been able to cover all the topics here in this video but if you feel there is something i didn't talk about or i forgot please let me know in the comment section if you've watched to this point thank you very much i appreciate i hope i've been able to answer a few questions please like share and subscribe see you in my next video bye